Hello and welcome to the Bitcoin Show, your favorite show online and on every screen and device. Everything that has a screen, we're going to be on. So um, check us out on iTunes and OnlyOneTV.com and YouTube. We're all over the place. I'm Bruce Wagner. It's Manny Mena. And Manny Mena. And today, um, first of all, today's episode is brought to you by our awesome, wonderful sponsors. I love the Bitcoin community. And uh, the Bitcoin community includes Bitcoin Bonus, BitcoinBonus.com. All your online shopping, they give you kickbacks and Bitcoin. What could be better? And TradeHill.com. TradeHill.com is the new, fastest, easiest, most convenient way to buy and sell Bitcoins online. Uh, get a 10% discount for life on all your trades if you use the referral code on your screen right there. TH-R141 and Mezzi Grill where authentic Mediterranean food tastes delicious. And they take Bitcoin. Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill.com. Check them out. And USGoldCoins.com, who is our hero, our money mentor, uh, Andy Gauss, who this is his company, USGoldCoins.com. Check them out. They're awesome. All right, so we're not just into Bitcoin. We're also into gold and silver rare coins. So today's episode, we're going to talk about what is a Bitcoin. Basically, Bitcoin for newbies is the topic. And joining uh, Manny and I is um, Anthony Anderson, who's actually, uh, you can see, <laughs> I hope you can see well, he's actually broadcasting live from his car on the way to the airport. You're in, uh, yeah. Min you're in Minneapolis, right? Near Minneapolis? Yeah, I'm headed towards the airport in Minneapolis and I'm flying to Los Angeles. So that's a whole other story, but um, we're right. gonna, one of, the, one of the 29 plus, maybe it's like 31 shows that we're gonna be Launching on Only One TV is the Anthony Anderson show. He's going to talk about green living and sustainable agriculture and things. I don't even know. It just makes my head explode. But really, really cool stuff for your body and your health and the planet and all those good things. So, but Manny, I mean, but uh, did I say Manny? Anthony. <laughs> Anthony is, um, uh, so he's going to be in the Anthony Anderson show and that's coming, coming soon on Only One TV. But meanwhile, we're here to talk about Bitcoin for newbies today. And yep. I want to talk about it in really, really simple terms. So... We're going to have to lower our technical <laughs> commentary so that we can really make it uh, appeal to the masses. What is a Bitcoin? People ask me all the time in these interviews, what is a Bitcoin? How would you explain it? So uh, let me start and then um, we'll you know, bounce it back. Mm -hmm. Manny's a technical geek expert and uh, Anthony is uh, semi-technical but m more representative of the, of the, of the normal people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, who, who are just like, what? this is cool, yeah, but it sounds really cool, cool. but what is it? I, I, yeah, I definitely have not been into the Bitcoin world yet. Okay, I don't know if you can hear him. He's chopping up. But as you can see, he's on an iPhone on Skype video driving his car. So uh, I assure you it's legal as long as you uh, don't have it up to your ear, right? I hope. Anyway, <laughs> so what is a Bitcoin? A Bitcoin, uh, Bit, Bitcoins are... I, I say on BitcoinMe.com is the, is the site that I created that's kind of the Bitcoin for newbies mm -hmm. site. The, um, what, the way I explain it is it's the future of money. It's kind of the uh, gold standard of digital currency. It's not credit card like or cash, uh, sorry, not credit card or PayPal like, it's cash like. Mm -hmm. What is, um, the, and also I say the five benefits of Bitcoin, if I can remember them all in, the, in order off the top of my head. The benefits of Bitcoin are that it is the first, the world's first decentralized currency. So there's no issuing entity, there's no bank, mm -hmm. there's no uh, business, corporation, website, or guy behind it. Or government. And people say, well, why do I care about that? The reason you care about that is every currency in the history of humankind, um, eventually somebody gets a hold of it and decides to start printing more. Whether it's Deutschmarks or US dollars, they just decide to print more. Of course, they're not actually printing them anymore now. They just type zeros on their keyboard and magically there are more. So uh, it's very convenient for the people who create the currency. But Bitcoin is unique because they can't print more. There yeah. will never be more than 21 million, but that doesn't mean there's a shortage because uh, hand in hand with the limit of 21 million is that it's virtually infinitely divisible. Right now it's just divisible to eight decimal places. Yep. Uh, but there's no reason that that couldn't be extended. So you know, we could actually be trading in millions of a Bitcoin or billions of a Bitcoin eventually as needed. So that's what makes it really beautiful, beautiful idea. Uh, so let's see, it's de de the world's first decentralized currency. Mm -hmm. It's not tied to the US dollar. It's got its own floating value based on the market of people buying and selling it. It's uh, the transaction fees are virtually zero because 
there there really are no transaction fees. They're just optional. So an optional fee to me that's yeah. not even that's like a donation to speed up the, the for, transaction for the time being. Right for the time being, it's not even necessary to, mm-hmm. to put any kind of a fee on it at all. It's really a donation, not a fee. And then the the uh, also that it's irreversible. With PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, all every credit card known to man, the transaction can be reversed. In the case of MasterCard, Visa, and PayPal, six months later, the transaction can be reversed, completely screwing the merchant out of the money. It's absolutely unethical, in my mm-hmm. opinion. And especially when, uh, in the U.S. alone, something like $45 billion a year is paid in fees just to credit cards. So it's absurd. And so a lot of people are really upset with the banks. Anyway. Uh, let's see. So it's zero transaction fees, mm-hmm. decentralized, no fees. Uh, what are the other? Oh, it's, it's nearly anonymous. It's it's as anonymous as you want it to be. It's a, approximately as anonymous as cash. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously cash is traceable forensically. So is Bitcoin, but in different ways. So yeah. it's sort of anonymous. It can be made anonymous a lot more than it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's the exact opposite of uh, a bank because yeah. that's completely tied to your identity. Another important aspect is that it prevents double spending or does a really good job of attempting to do so. So if you spend one Bitcoin today on like groceries, you can't spend it tomorrow on gasoline. So right. once it's spent, it's always been spent. And that's a very important aspect because for like something like MP3s, you can make infinite copies and you'll always have it won't matter, but with Bitcoin, if you make a copy, you know, you're basically making it useless by creating more out right. of the same entity. That's so, an interesting thought, too, that, that I wonder if it could be used for intellectual property in the future. But anyway, that's kind of under the hood, but it's really, really mm-hmm. important aspect of the technology of how it works, because obviously if you have a, a currency that you can spend twice, it's useless. So, yeah, that's part of the, the fundamental nature of Bitcoin that, you know, mm-hmm. obviously that it really is, it acts as if it is an actual coin that you can only spend once and only one person can own it and they can only spend it once. It's sort of like digital gold. It has a lot of the same properties, right. pretty much. Digital gold, except, except it's better because, of course, it's digital, first of all. Mm-hmm. And, it, and secondly, it's, um, the, it's divisible. Like you can have gold and you can divide it out down so far until it's like the form factor is not convenient. The form factor is perfect because if you click it and you can send a, a millionth of a Bitcoin or a million Bitcoins, you know, yeah. with the same click. But uh, it's divisible to any decimal place, which you can't conveniently do with gold. Yeah, that's another and slice thing. it and dice it. Uh, are there any other things? That yes, I a very, very, very important part of Bitcoin is that its supply is limited. You did touch up on that. That's only 21 million. But it's fixed right now at about 50 Bitcoins every 10 minutes are created, mm-hmm. you know, through a process go- called mining. We won't get into it, but sort of the same idea as mining for gold, where you have to put in actual work. But instead of putting in work of, you know, slaves in Africa, you're putting work um, mm-hmm. for uh, computer uh, computational power. Right. So and it's so sort of the same Exactly. Concept. So the, the, the net result for the user is that it's a predicted curve. You, we, everybody knows, everybody on earth knows the exact, or almost exact curve of what, how many Bitcoins are created and when. And they can even estimate down to the approximate date of when we'll reach, almost reach 21 million. And then there'll never be more. So based on that, the economy can thrive knowing that the, you know, the, how many will, will exist. So in spite of the fact that new Bitcoins are being created every 10 minutes, approximately, the, uh, the value overall is going up dramatically. It just goes up and up and up. Sometimes there's, you know, some crazy headline that makes, you know, panic sellers drop, you know, sell and it mm-hmm. drops the value for a minute and then it goes back up again. It'll drop and then go back up to 20% of what it, it peaked. Usually yeah. what happens is there's a big peak mm-hmm. and then it drops about... Uh, they maybe you know drops a certain amount mm-hmm. and then it goes back up about 60% yeah. to what it peaked and then it keeps on going up so yeah. if you if you panic when it's going down and sell uh, you will definitely be selling at the low <laughs> and if you get all excited when it's going up and up and up and then you buy you're definitely going to buy at the high but overall even people who do that from my experience what's been happening is people that always buy it when it's high and always buy it, sell it when it's low they still end up doubling their money because over time it's just it's going up and down up and down up and down on its way up it's just a crazy thing like yeah. the title sequence on our show how the thing goes do 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 yeah it goes up and down on its way straight up 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's another problem right now that I guess doesn't make it very user friendly is how liquid it is, because the demand has a direct relationship with the value. So uh, when there's more demand, you see the value go up, and you know when you see people sell, since the market's still very little, you know you'll see a direct relationship with value on that again. Mm-hmm. So um, you know until a couple more years where there's more bitcoins in circulation. Or until there's that 21 million, uh, you know, I think it's going to be pretty volatile. Volatile, yeah. It, it's volatile because so many people are speculating, they're buying it. So it's kind of like yeah. the gold rush days. So, Anthony, yes. uh, we, you know, you've heard me talking about Bitcoin since I discovered it. You know, I've, he's one of my best friends in life. So you've heard me rant and rave, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. They, their comedy team back there is... Uh, they were they were mocking every they were like imitating everybody in the whole office and uh, and uh, they were imitating me. Bit, my, <laughs> Joshua yeah. was like Bitcoin, 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 Mt. Gox, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> but what do you what do you say? What do you what's your take on it now? Now that we're like six months ago, you learned about it. It is, it is so much deeper than what I ever even expected. What it's what at first kind of sounded like this. You know, maybe almost like a stock or something. It's like the idea of this wealth creation and how we value it now and how it's gone up. And, and you were telling me to get it when it was like 40 cents. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, yeah, well, you know, and, and I, I'm just like, this is, and, but this is so much deeper because of, you know, with the, the way the economy is structured now and, and how it's like Bitcoin is really the, it's like the, agile mammal compared to the dinosaur and it can just it's just it's it's so much deeper than i think people even realize and just to see how i'm really in in awe of all this right yeah i mean i think it was 20 about 20 cents or something like that when we first learned about it and um i remember (laughs) yeah i told you about it of course right away and then i remember um, I remember clearly the morning when it went to uh, Mount Gox, it went to 50 cents because I was so excited and Ed had to go. He had like a dentist appointment or something. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's 50 cents. It's doubled, it's doubled. Oh my God, everybody's money has doubled. And uh, I was like, sell, <laughs> sell, sell, sell. Then I did sell some. But, um, and then, yeah, they were, they, I was in the doghouse for like weeks. Because, I mean, a couple days later, Ed bought back all the ones I sold for 50 cents. The two, three days later, he bought them all back at 77, 78 cents. You know, oh, that wow. was not good. But yeah. actually, a lot of people have stories like that. Like, you know, they bought it at a dollar. Mm-hmm. When it hit $2, they sold. Actually, I met somebody the other day who said he bought it when it was uh, half a cent. You know, it was like 0.6 cent of a cent. And okay. I said, please tell me you bought a lot. He says, oh, yeah, I did. I bought like a thousand bitcoins and you know, yeah. which is not really a lot, but you know, okay, a thousand bitcoins. And then, um, he said, I said, Oh, that's great. And then he said, yeah, but I got so excited when it reached a whole cent that I sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, I want to talk to somebody, by the way, if you're in the audience and you bought bitcoins at a phenomenally low price and you bought a bunch of bitcoins when they were half a cent and you still have a lot of them. I want to talk to you, even if it's not on the air. I just want to talk to you privately because I want to hear a story like that. Okay, so write to me. Uh, just send an email to bruce at onlyonetv.com. My number is published, as everybody knows. So um, so are you, gonna, are you selling everything and buying Bitcoin now, Anthony, or what? Well, recently, just because of my life, I've been trying to uh, get a living set up. And put, I'm putting my money into this garden and... And all this, but now that that's finished, I have more freedom to some investing. But now I'm scared Always. that it's so hot. Like, is it? I mean, what is it at now? 13, 14? I don't and even know. Somebody in the chat room want to tell us what it is on um, Trade Hill right now? Uh, it was floating th- around there. Around, yeah. 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 It's like, gosh, I'm so mad at myself for not getting it when it was uh, 40 cents. What, what did you say about 40 cents? You broke up a little. I'm just so mad at myself for not getting it oh. when even it was a dollar 40 cents or you know now it makes i want to get more because i feel like i'm getting ripped off but mm-hmm. well no i mean no, and that's the other thing that happens is people think they're getting ripped off because it's now so high but the thing is that uh you know 
that's what they said when it hit 50 cents. That's what they hit, said when it hit a dollar. That's what they said when it hit two dollars. You know, it's like, oh, it's really a high time right now. And it's not really because it's you know, it's $2 then and yeah. almost 20 bucks now. What's interesting is that um, people are using Bitcoin as an investment versus, you know, sort of using it as a currency. So I think that plays in its value as well. Um, and then uh, we just saw what happened with Mt. Gox and it didn't even go under $10, you know. Right. Except for that one temporary moment, which is still unclear what exactly well, happened. The, yeah, the flash yeah. crash. But it really didn't go below. I don't. I wonder what the lowest it went to on Trade Hill. Yeah. So I, if it's stable at around ten dollars or more, I think that's phenomenal. Especially when less than a year ago it was worth you know pennies. Exactly. So it, it's just insane. And I think if it stabilizes something around this, even for a few weeks or a couple of months, um, it'll encourage people to actually transact in bitcoins. It'll encourage merchants, you know, to accept bitcoins, uh, where you know a lot of the vol volatility. I'm sorry. Volatility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comes into play. Yeah, you know, people um, who, even, even old timers sort of in the um, Bitcoin world, forget that there was a tra an exchange site before Mt. Gox that uh, in Russia that was set up and they, took, they opened up for business and they got lots and lots of money in and the guy ended up just shutting it down and running with all the money. And of course, like I say, Bitcoin survived that. Bitcoin has it has obviously survived this trouble with Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox, like somebody said, 90% of the, the buying and selling online is it w has been through Mt. Gox. But now we have Trade Hill and so on. Yeah. But there, more and more exchanges are popping up and everybody knows that. Yeah, and that's good because it encourages competition between exchanges and we're not essentially putting all of our eggs in one basket. Exactly. Uh, it's good to have multiple exchanges, uh, not only for competition, but if one exchange does go down, it won't affect uh, market price or it won't affect, uh, you know, users who are using Bitcoin every day. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty resilient. The fact that it was at, uh, what was it, like 1750 when Mount, right before the flash crash on Mount Gox, I think it was about 1750. That's what Kevin Day said. I, mean, I don't really watch the price. People ask me what the price is every second, but I don't know. Uh, I watch it occasionally, but I, I'm not obsessed with it. But I think it was 1750, and then um, and now it's was it like 13 or 15 on Trade Hill today, something like that. That's not much of a. That's really not much of a dip when you think about it. I mean, it's not growing exponentially like it had been. It kind of like has leveled off a little bit, but it really didn't go down much for considering the fact that the exchange that handles 90% of the traffic went down. And somebody, a, a, a someone in the chat room is asking. Uh, me, what do I expect it to reach after Mt. Gox comes back up? Um, I think it's just going to keep going up, personally. I think that, you know, I, I had originally said it would be $100 by the end of June. That might be stunted a little bit. Maybe it'll be $100 by the end of July. I may have to revise that, uh, that estimate. But I do think it's going to go up to, you know, 30 50 and 100 probably yeah. by the end of July. What do you think? Um, I don't like to speculate, but um, I will say that, you know, given the events, maybe people just for a couple of weeks you know might be a little more hesitant to trade or it might delay their trading because they want to figure out how exactly they could secure their funds because, right. you know we have to remember these wallet files are now worth a lot of money so right. exactly um, you know that might factor into how people trade but you know i think within a few weeks um it might start going up again i think it'll probably right. stabilize around 20 bucks for a little bit and i have to give the disclaimer that we don't give financial advice and we don't say buy 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 like the guys in the forum do <laughs> um i don't tell people to buy or sell i um I have my own opinion of, and in my guess as to what the, the, the value will be is completely pulled out of thin air. It's not really based on anything at all. It's just based on my guess uh, based on the past performance. But of course, yeah. past performance is no, uh, ne not necessarily an indicator of future. Yeah, a big aspect of Bitcoin too is faith. Like if you look at the community, uh, you could just see how much faith the community has in Bitcoin. That's right. Uh, especially because they want to see it strive, they want to see it grow, and they want it, uh, you know, possibly when they become an alternative, alternative to you know, um, fiat currencies. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm I'm on that team. Um, I hope that one day it could revolutionize the way that you know we use money every day. Right. So I wanted to succeed because of that, and I'm sure there's many others like me in that sense, especially in the third world. You know, Bitcoin is just not in the United States. It's all over the world. 
there's many other countries in the world that need Bitcoin more than they do over here in the United States. Although here in the United States, you know, it is needed pretty badly. Right. The um, that's one of the one of the biggest issues. Uh, well, one is obviously uh, liquidity, like you touched on. People need to be able to get it in and out of not only merchandise and, and shopping and, and all that, which is absolutely important, but uh, maybe even more important is to be able to get it in and out of cash. They need to be mm -hmm. able to put cash into Bitcoin and get cash right back out of Bitcoin as easy as, um, as anything. You know, that's interesting that you bring that up. Um, I didn't read the article, but I sort of glanced at it. Um, the CEO of Douala, uh, mm -hmm. He recently, I forget which publication, but uh, he uh, started talking about, vir uh, well, they call it virtual currency. I don't like to call it virtual currency because that makes it seem like it's imaginary, mm -hmm. but digital currency and, uh, you know, Douala plays a very big role in facilitating, you know, uh, money from U.S. dollars to Bitcoins. Um, and they play a very large role in that, especially through Mt. Gox and Trade Hill, I imagine. So he had some thoughts on that. And um, I think that, you know, a service like that or any service like that or just facilitating, you know, in and out of Bitcoin from U.S. dollars uh, will make it much more viable in the future. If Douala nails it in the head, you know, with their new feature that they're coming out, the FiSync or whatever, right. where you could do that instantly. So instead of waiting, you know, four or five days, you just wait a day or two. I think, you know, that will drive the value of Bitcoin up, you know, just because it makes it so much easier for a layman to use. So the, the founder of Douala spoke about Bitcoin? I'm not sure about Bitcoin specifically, but digital currencies. We got to get him on here as a guest. So if you're yeah. watching, call me. Um, we want to talk with you. We want to talk with Douala and, and, and how Bitcoin has changed uh, Douala because I know that there's got to be a massive number of people yeah, he, using Dwala. He to said get in the article that every in, single day he's asked about virtual about, currency. Yeah. yeah, and Bitcoin is, it's kind of like um, Ubuntu is to Linux as uh, Bitcoin is to virtual currency. It seems like, you know, like 99% of the installs of Linux is Ubuntu. But uh, Bitcoin really, I think, is like kind of like becoming, if it's not already, the gold standard in ver digital currency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, Let's see. The uh, so liquidity is one of the big problems or issues or concerns mm -hmm. that people are. Everyone's trying to come up with ways to solve that. And then, and the next one that's just as urgent, if not more so, is security. As you mentioned, the, I know that a lot of groups are working on uh, new Bitcoin clients that will actually mm -hmm. have the wallet file encrypted from its inception and backed mm -hmm. up in the cloud, but with that's separate what, keys and things. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Gavin was planning on putting um, encrypting every individual transaction mm -hmm. or every individual key in the wallet file. This mm -hmm. way, um, because if you encrypt the whole wallet file and then you load it into memory, it's compromised in memory because mm. it has to be decrypted memory mm. so it could be usable. So mm -hmm. they're going that approach and I think that's pretty awesome. That, wow. and you know, I'm sure there's, the Bitcoin community, you know, it's a lot of smart people. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, they'll vent something to supplement that as well. These problems will be solved soon. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to, like, as soon as we're done with this show today, you know, what Manny and I are doing, and Chris, we're going to work on um, a how-to video that's going to document what to do right now today. Because people have money in Bitcoin, and some, some people have serious money in Bitcoin already. Yeah. And, and you need a way to back it up securely on your own, mm -hmm. uh, trusting nobody but yourself. You know, uh, and so we're going to create a how-to, a do-it-yourself video and uh, put it together. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna write out the recipe and have some experts uh, approve that it's, that it's accurate. <laughs> then we're gonna create the whole video showing you exactly how to do it. So there'll be a, a video that you can watch and uh, do it yourself at home. And when, it's all, when the video is finished, I'm gonna have some experts review the video again to make sure it's perfect. And then we're gonna publish it and put it out here on, on onlyonetv.com so that you can back up your own um, Bitcoin, whether it's your life savings or a month's income or whatever, um, you can actually back it up and secure it yourself. You don't have mm -hmm. to trust any of these uh, cloud-based services because, you know, let's face it. I mean, you're, you're trusting somebody that you don't really know. And, and, and all of them are new. And Even, I mean, Bitcoin is brand new, so yeah, they don't have a, a long There's a problem with that with the whole Mt. Gox breach. A lot of MyBitcoin.com users mm -hmm. were compromised as well because they yeah. used the same username and password mm -hmm. for MyBitcoin.com. Right. So... Um, 
you know, it's, I, I've never, well, I have used it, but I don't keep anything on my Bitcoin.com. Not because I don't trust them, but because I trust myself more. Exactly. It's not that we don't trust them, it's that we trust ourselves more. The, um, you know, one of the things that I'm asked all the time, and someone's asking in the chat room, is um, what is Bitcoin backed by? Because, you know, we're, we're so brainwashed to think that currencies mm -hmm. should be backed by precious metals like gold. Yeah. And uh, some people actually think that currencies are backed by gold, which they're not. Yeah, <laughs> None actually, of the modern currencies are. That, that's funny. I, at my work, I was explaining Bitcoin to a coworker who used to deal with Forex exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he sort of read about Bitcoin like back when it was like only pennies. I was like, what? You didn't buy? He was like, no, you know, I didn't understand it. So I, I sort of let it go. But I was explaining to it. And then, um, you know, somebody overheard and they were saying, oh, you know, but we're backed by gold and stuff. And I was like, you know, that's actually pretty false, you know. It's we, totally false. Yeah, yeah, we're based on the fractional reserve central banking system. Yeah. So the problem with our current um, economic system, which I'm actually doing research on because I'm trying to do something else. Uh, but basically what happens is we're creating money out of debt and we're using money as debt. Exactly. And on top of this, where, uh, you know, the sole purpose of the central bank, which over here in the United States is the Federal Reserve. Um, the whole purpose is to buy, you know, government issued bonds. And then they're the ones that borrow to other banks at, you know, artificially set uh, interest rates. And this, in the large scheme of things, what it does, it, it devalues the dollar for the person that's using it. And it does that through inflation and how they create uh, the money. So I think Bitcoin um, is so radically new to so many people because you'll, if you go online, you'll see a lot of economists saying why Bitcoin is bad. And some of the reasons they'll say, oh, it's because it's not issued by anybody, <laughs> you know, but Bitcoin is, it gains value by the same reason the American dollar gains value. And that's through faith. We have right. faith that others are going to accept it as currency. We have faith that people are going to use it for goods and services. And we have faith especially for all the investors and speculators, that people will exchange it for U.S. dollars. That's what it is. Uh, the big leg up that, you know, fiat currencies like the American dollar have is that they're mandated by government to be accepted as legal tender. Bitcoin does not have that. Um, and, uh, you know, the American dollar is not backed by anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's, it, it's given value and we accept that value and we have faith that other people are going to accept that value. Right. Uh, so, you know, Bitcoin is the same exact thing, except, you know, it's not issued by a government where they could devalue it through inflation and printing more money. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great thing about Bitcoin that nobody can mess with it. Right. It, the, yeah. And that's important to re enough to repeat that, you know, no currency and especially not the U.S. dollar are backed by gold or silver. Uh, peeps, a lot of people think that it should be. What I say is I wish that gold was backed by Bitcoin because mm -hmm. I, it's all about faith. It's all about confidence. And I trust Bitcoin more than gold. I really do because it's, it's, got, it's a superior form factor. It's mm -hmm. digital. You can encrypt it and back it up. And as long as the, it's really faith in the technology of cryptography and the internet itself. Yeah, we haven't More stressed this, but it's a cryptocurrency. And that's, that's right. important to stress because right. it is based off of, you know, cryptography. Off the state of the art of cryptography. That's, it's, it's, uh, as, as far as technology of 2011, it's absolutely unbreakable. And uh, if there ever is technology that, is, that can hack it, break into it, it will actually, they'll crack all the world's banking systems way yeah. before Bitcoin. Well, the thing is that it's not impossible. It's just that it takes a large amount of time, right. like more than our lifetime. So it's just not feasible right now. That thus it's impossible. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you can, you, even if you can, um, you can crack one, <laughs> one transaction or whatever. Um, the thing is that each one is built on another and another and another. Yeah. And it gets exponentially giant, harder to exactly each one. exponentially harder, which makes it impossible. So um, I really trust that more than gold bars stored in a, you know, how many stories, there's always another story of some uh, vaulting service in Hong Kong that has the gold bars filled with lead and, yeah. and all that. So. Um, what's, uh, I was just reading actually before the show, uh, I'm probably going to get the country wrong. I think it's Zimbabwe, um, which is in Africa. Um, 
but they had in 2008 their monetary system completely collapsed and at the height of that you know collapse mm -hmm. um, I think it was like I forget what the name of their currency was but let's just say Zimbabwe dollars mm -hmm. um, it, was, it took like um, a billion Zimbabwe dollars to buy like a loaf of bread or something like that and they were like contemplating bringing out a trillion dollar note you know, just craziness. That wow. just shows you how central banking can get out of control or, or you know, any fiat currency where um, any one person or one entity has control, you know, to print more. That's what we need, a trillion dollar note in U.S. dollars with Bernanke's face on it. I yeah. saw a picture like that. Before. And that still wouldn't be enough to cover the debt. Yeah, exactly. The debt to who is another question. Let me take a break right now because I want to, I wanna, again, express our gratitude to uh, our sponsors because without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, um, please call our sponsors up, email them, and thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show and Only One TV in general. Uh, and so first is Bitcoin Bonus. Bitcoinbonus.com. For all your online shopping needs, everything that you're buying anyway online, even if you're buying it with Bitcoin or dollars, it doesn't matter, uh, go to Bitcoinbonus.com right before you click that buy button and check and see if they're listed there because you can find the merchant on bitcoinbonus.com and they're going to give you a kickback in Bitcoin. What could be better? If, they, if the merchant doesn't take Bitcoin, maybe they'll give you Bitcoin for shopping there. Oh man, I'm such an idiot. What? You I just bought, bought something. something on Amazon and I'm I gonna forgot to use Bitcoin you. Bonus. How could you forget? Oh. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to block the buy button on your, on your browser until, <laughs> until you are trained to go to bitcoinbonus.com before you hear that, Dr. Frugal? Go to bitcoinbonus.com before you buy anything. Don't make my mistake. <laughs> Free bitcoins. Hello. Okay. Next, tradehill.com. Tradehill.com is the new kid on the block. They're, they're new, but they're an amazingly bright and energetic group of people that have started this uh, company. It's uh, basically the same idea as Mt. Gox. For those of you who are new to Bitcoin, it's an automated online exchange. So if you can't go, if you can't find a local trader who's going to buy and sell Bitcoin for you in your neighborhood or your town, um, this is the next best thing. You can buy online 24 hours a day without even leaving your home. So they have um, many, many currencies and many ways to get money into them and to get money back out when you, when you sell Bitcoin. And if you go to tradehill.com and you'll get 10% off your trades for life off the trade fees, which are minuscule anyway. Um, you, if you enter this uh, code, referral code, it stands for Trade Hill Referral Code. It's TH-R141. TH-R141. You see it on your screen right there. You get 10% off your, all your trades for life, and we really appreciate Trade Hill for all that they're doing for the Bitcoin community and their support also of this uh, crisis with Mt. Gox. I mean, everybody's kind of, it's almost like a tsunami. Everybody's coming in to help each other, and we, we, everybody cares about Bitcoin. And also, Mezzi Grill, <clears throat> the, the, the restaurant that's been featured on Al Jazeera English, and oh my gosh, so many different TV networks and, and reporters are going there to to film and shoot and, and photograph this restaurant because it's one of the, it's apparently the first restaurant in Manhattan that accepts Bitcoin. They have authentic Mediterranean food. It's kind of like a Chipotle, but a little bit more upscale and nice and, and Mediterranean food and it's delicious. And the reason we, <laughs> the reason they accept Bitcoin, you'll read, is because uh, it's Ed and I's favorite place. We, we were going there two or three times a week and we became great friends with the owner, Marwan, and um, go in and ask for Marwan, say hi from, from Bruce and Ed, uh, but we uh, told him all about Bitcoin from the very beginning, and so thus he is uh, the first restaurant in Manhattan that accepts Bitcoin. So you can go in there with your with your MyBitcoin.com or your uh, Android app, and you can pay with Bitcoin by scanning the barcode on the cash register. It's so cool. You got to go there just to try it. And uh, what else? Oh, and they, oh, and now they're open for breakfast. He's reminding me. Yeah, now they have breakfast as well as lunch and dinner, which is awesome. We got to go try their breakfast. We haven't done that yet. Okay, <laughs> we always go there for dinner. And U.S. gold coins. <clears throat> Andrew Gauss is a monetary expert in the world, in my opinion. And um, he has a company called usgoldcoins.com. And U.S. gold coins is about buying and sell, buying mainly he sells gold and silver numismatic coins. Numismatic just means rare, rare and valuable. So they have a double value. They have the value of the gold or the silver and the fact that they're rare U.S. coins. So you've got both things going for you. Sometimes it'll go up because of the value of the metal, and other times it's going up because of the value of, because it's so rare. 
as people melt down coins, your coin becomes even more rare. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, if you want to diversify your investments and have Bitcoin, but you don't want to have all your eggs in any one basket, um, you want to buy numismatic gold and silver coins. U.S. Gold Coins is the place to go. He's absolutely honest and above board in everything he does. I can really vouch for his integrity. It's not just like another one of these gold factory places. So thanks to all of our sponsors, BitcoinBonus.com, TradeHill.com, MeziGrill.com, and U.S. Gold Coins. When you uh, contact them, thank them for sponsoring Only One TV. So let me ask you, uh, Anthony. Do, does everybody you know talk about Bitcoin, or is it only me? It would be only you, but seeing it on Bloomberg, I was just like, whoa, oh my god. It's like, that's huge, huge exposure. But no, otherwise, in my social circle, I don't hear about Bitcoin. No? <laughs> but you saw, he, he was it. And he, I he, bring it up to other people. Yeah, he, uh, he was really impressed like, by the Bloomberg not, TV clip. <laughs> I know. It's like my friend, uh, I have a, my friend Chuck who, uh, you know, I had been telling him about Bitcoin since the very beginning. Um, he was a, a computer client of mine and um, he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Bruce, one ear, in one ear and out the other. It's another wacky thing that he's telling me about. He didn't really, you know, trust what I was saying. I don't know. But then when the Forbes magazine article came out and I said, look at this, and I opened it and there, there's my name all over it and everything. He's like, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it's real. He grabbed my arm literally and drug me to the bank. I wanna buy Bitcoin right now, I wanna buy Bitcoin right now. So I helped him through that process. He bought like $3,500 worth and then it was about seven days later, he called me up and said, sell, 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 sell. And I'm like, I, I'm busy, I'm like wait, wait, wait. Oh I, my yeah, I know and I said, uh, actually I don't have time to do that right now and I've told you a hundred times it's not a stock and I'm not, your stockbroker. So, <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, he was like, sell, sell, sell. So I just tweeted. I said, a friend has, you know, this, this many Bitcoins to sell. And some, somebody drove down from Boston to pay him cash, like boom, that same day for the Bitcoins. Cause everybody wants to buy and he's selling. Okay. So his Bitcoin from $35, $3,500 a week later was $10,000. Could I, could I do a shameless plug? Sure. Um, I am going to sell my TV and my PlayStation three. <laughs> for bitcoin <laughs> i don't want cash i want bitcoin um it's a 40 inch panasonic 1080p television um <laughs> it has a good contrast ratio i don't know what else to describe about Somebody the tv the it's, sold. A, it's a run-of-the-mill <laughs> tv and then it's um uh it's the older fat as they call it playstation 3s it was the 80 gig with an upgraded um 7200 rpm uh, 100 gig hard drive in there. Okay, you're getting offers from the chat room already, so email manny at onlyonetv.com and your inbox will be full of offers. Is, is that email good? Yeah. Well, if, uh, maybe email sure bruce at onlyonetv.com <laughs> and I'll forward them to him just in well, case. Well, email it sure to it's Bruce working. and Manny. Bruce and Manny. This way, just in case it works. No, not Bruce yeah. and Manny. Bruce at onlyonetv.com <laughs> yeah. and or you know, just send it to Bruce at, at onlyonetv.com and I'll make sure he gets it. But uh, yes, I know some people are selling their personal clothing. They're, they're selling anything and everything to... Uh, to buy Bitcoin. So um, what do you think, Anthony? Are you, are you ready to invest in, in Bitcoin? Well, what is it at right now? It's like $2 <laughs> or something? It's not going down. I can tell you that. What is, what is it at, you guys? It's, 12 it's bucks so, or something? Uh, um, 15? Oh, I know it's growing. And it's, uh, it's between 12 and 18. It's such a between trip. 12 and 18. It's such a trip. Yeah. Especially the Federal Reserve. Yeah, it's between 12 and 18, and we're not talking cents. If it was the Fed that crashed, I'm not talking. What? What'd you say, Anthony? Can you hear me? It's at 18 cents? No, it was when I told you about it. Now uh, it's like $18. <laughs> Imagine if you had sold your car and bought Bitcoin then. <laughs> oh, so I didn't finish telling this. Go ahead, what? <laughs> well, it's just such a turbulent time with the Fed. I, I wonder if the Fed's tried to crash Mt. Gox. Oh, no, I don't think so. I, I think it's pretty unlikely that they're, well, you like, I, I, you never know. You never know. It depends on how, how like, your, as Andrew uh, Shave says, it depends on your level of paranoia, I suppose. But personally, I think it, we're, you know, Bitcoin's not even, it's barely on their radar. At this point, it's, it's way too small for them to worry about. They have bigger problems to worry about. But, 
the uh, it, but it is you know I'm sure that it's like barely a bleep on the edge of the radar, but eventually it will cause right. concern for them. Yeah. But like I said in that Forbes article, the the last line in the Forbes article, you know, by the time they figure this out, it will have already caught hold because this is this is like igniting, like uh, spreading like a wildfire. You, you know what gave Bitcoin the yeah. most credibility is when it shot up to thirty dollars. That's yeah. when people really started paying attention, and yeah. that's when you started seeing. Uh, influx of articles. Uh, the best one to date is the one by The Economist. Yes. I think they did a really good job of sort of piecing a whole picture together. Because to really understand Bitcoin, you need to understand multiple disciplines. And, you know, there's not too many people who have a strong, firm grasp in each of those disciplines. So I thought they did a really good job of sort of giving an overall idea and a much better and clearer picture of what it is because most articles are very vague because even the authors they even themselves don't have a full grasp on, on what it is right. I felt you know the author of that article they did have a, a pretty good grasp yeah the economist it was a one of the blogs an economist blog I forgot what it's called maybe somebody in the chat room can tell us but it there was yeah it was like everybody seems to agree that that was the best one that explains especially from a technical standpoint yeah and then um, the New York Observer uh, was the, my favorite because it talked about me the most, <laughs> you know, and of course that's important. But anyway, no, um, uh, that young lady is, uh, was phenomenal. I talked to her 45 minutes on a Friday night. She was so appreciative and she did a, she did a great story, which uh, was really fun. Uh, you know, Ed, it's, it's just when you, when you go to a newsstand or a newspaper, you know, stand whatever, and you buy the newspaper magazine and you see your name in print, it's like, that's so cool. Everybody likes that, but um, but yeah, the uh, the Economist has done I think the best job. So many, you know, and it's it's. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because so many of these major media story. Also, the one on Bloomberg, it, it was really really short, but it mm -hmm. was it was very accurate. I think it was you know right on target. But some of them, like Fortune, uh, Fortune.com blog. I mean, I was very upset, and I publicly I posted in the forum about that a rebuttal because the guy interviewed me. And he asked me all these things, and uh, you know, I say he really combined two completely different thoughts into one, and twisted my words, and really made Bitcoin sound bad. And it seemed to me, before he actually interviewed me, uh, he said something about, you know, I said, you know, please do better than these other journalists have done in explaining it, and and I offered that I, you know, to read it before it actually went to print so that I could let him know if there's anything that's really inaccurate and you know not to criticize but just to make you look good and he didn't do that and uh, he went ahead, he said oh don't worry we check our facts we're not like business week we we absolutely check our facts and we we know what we're doing we've done the research and uh, he said if you um, you know people who are going to disagree with this article it's going to be because of our take on it our position our stance mm -hmm. this is before the interview so it seemed very obvious to me that what happens in these situations is they're give, reporters given marching orders. They're saying, I want you to write an article about this new thing called Bitcoin. I know you've never heard of it, but do an article about Bitcoin. I need it done by four. And uh, the take on it is it's disastrous and the public is never, it's, it's going to fail and it's not safe, it's not secure. And um, it's probably going to be made illegal and Americans are never going to get a choice to invest in it. So th write the article. So like, it's almost as if they already had their position decided before he even knew the difference between Bitcoin and a toaster oven. Yeah. So Sounds yeah, I mean, I, I wrote uh, this whole email about like 30 things that were absolutely inaccurate. Like he just had so many things completely inaccurate and misquoting me too. Yeah, there's, I've seen a few articles like that. And um, even from economists, you know, like I said before, you know, uh, some people are just so conditioned to like really love central banking because you know it solves the problem right. of you know money supply where they could create as much money as they need to do as they please you know sure. uh, and you know bitcoin is a different approach because it's a deflationary currency instead of an inflationary currency like what we have now so i think that's another aspect it's so new and so different this is the first every kind of currency of this nature we've ever had. So people just don't know how to react. Mm -hmm. Some questions from the chat room are coming in. Um, why do we need to get cash out of Bitcoin? I thought we were trying to replace cash. Well, well right now it's still in its infancy. So um, until 
we have sort of like an ubiquitous use of Bitcoin where everywhere is accepting Bitcoin. You know, it's not really feasible and it's not really even convenient uh, to, you know, just transact specifically in Bitcoin. You know, there's still so many people that haven't even heard of it. It's still not even really on the government's radar. It might be on the CIA's radar, but that's, you know, for different reasons. Um, so it's too, it's too early for that. Right now, the biggest thing that could um, give credibility and give value and sort of give like a base and a hold for Bitcoin would be easeability of moving from fiat currencies to Bitcoin and vice versa. The easier, that, and the easier and the faster it is to be able to do that, um, I guess the more transparency you'll start seeing Mm -hmm. And the more transparency there is, you know, the more people are just going to, you know, why are we even trading for dollars, you know, let's mm -hmm. just trade for Bitcoin. Right. And um, so I think um, as time goes on, we'll start sort of verging onto that. And right. I hope that's the direction that it goes into. But right now, there, there's so many people just buying Bitcoin as an investment. It is about faith. It's, it's having mm -hmm. faith in the technology and that there is a future here. It's like, have you heard about that new thing called the the internet, I want to buy some internets. How do I buy some internet, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like it's, an, it's an, in its infancy and people are like, they're seeing the future here. Mm -hmm. This is definitely gonna be big. How do I buy some? So there's a lot of people just buying it yeah. as an investment. And there's always gonna be misconceptions and people in the, in the public and people in politics and the media, they'll never have a full grasp on it. Right. Even with the internet, you know, the, <laughs> It's People been made fun of so many times on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, but, you know, there was a senator, Ted something from Alaska, that said, you know, the internet was a series of tubes, <laughs> you know, and it had to deal with, you know, net neutrality and things like that. So there's always going to be, you know, large corporations and large sort of institutions lobbying the public that don't necessarily know what it is, you know, um, to do things in their favor. So it's always going to be a constant struggle struggle from those that actually know what's going on and you know and the right. the uninformed. In, in the meantime, I say there's three phases to the uh, mass adoption of Bitcoin. The first phase was mining when everyone can mine. You just turn on your computer, run an app and it creates money and that was really really cool. That's pretty much over now. Mining is a specialized industry that you need special software, special hardware and special expertise. So it's kind of its own industry now. And so now it's kind of like a quirky side thing that's its own industry, but the average person isn't doing it. Um, it's not profitable. And then the second phase is what we're in now is investment. So that's why liquidity is so important that you get cash in, you can get cash out. Like I started to tell that story where my friend gave me, uh, he, he bought $3,500 worth of Bitcoin and then he sold it, like he wanted to sell it a week later, he got 10,000 back. And he had this envelope from the guy, 10000 in cash. Some guy drove down, down from Boston, right? And he gives him this envelope with $10,000 cash. And I, I saw his face. He got it and he did exactly what I knew he was going to do. He took this cash and he goes, okay, now if I buy Bitcoin with this again, like he just <laughs> tested the system. He just wanted to put it in, you know, more than double his money and get it right back out and then put it right back in again. Yeah. So he has consistently um, screwed up really. I mean, he's consistently bought it when it was really high you know, and sold it when it was really low, but he's doubled his money, at least yeah. double his money every time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, well, I'm, I'm interested in how, you know, people who have more financial resources go about it than those who do not, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, there may be more of a barrier or or it may make more sense because, you know, usually people uh, with, with a lot of equity they're more open to investments and such mm -hmm. and usually when it's you know the average joe um you know a small investment for you know somebody who has a lot of equity is a small uh, it's you know a very large investment for a normal person like you know myself mm -hmm. so you know i'm glad i discovered it when i did even though i don't have a lot of bitcoins and i didn't have a lot of money at the time you know um i still have you know a, a little decent amount not too much and uh, mm -hmm. I can only imagine what it feels like, you know, to be able to buy $20,000 worth of Bitcoin and then, you know, see that go up in value. Yeah, isn't that amazing? It's like, well, I mean, it's uh, a combination of having the money, of course, but also getting in early, of course, and also having the faith. Because a lot of, I know there are a lot of people who got in really early, but they didn't buy any. Or they got in, they made, you know, it went up and then they sold it and so on. 
So that, you know, it's about getting in early, having some money, yeah. and then staying in and keeping it in there. No matter how tempting it is, when it doubles, triples, quadruples, you're so tempted to take it out, leave it in. I mean, if, if people, the people who did that mm -hmm. and continue to do that, they're the ones who are going to be. Somebody, I read an article somewhere, somebody was predicting that, that you know this is the new aristocracy that if you own a this guy said not me mm -hmm. some guy i read this blogger who wrote if you have one bitcoin you'll be a millionaire and if you have two thousand bitcoin you'll have like bill gates wealth yeah I don't so know. that'll be interesting and what else i think is cool it's going to be you know a different like subculture of people you know uh who invested early you know like these geeks and these intellectual types you know that they'll start having this wealth versus mm -hmm. you know these traditional people that were either born into it or massaged the system in right. order to get to that status. So I think that would be interesting in the cultural and sort of like um, political mm -hmm. aspect in the future. Anthony, let me ask you this. What do you, I mean, from your perspective, because I know you're all about green living and protecting the environment and health and kind of this uh, oneness of humanity, this new tipping point of enlightenment, you know, that, that, the, that the earth is coming to. What role do you, do you see Bitcoin playing a role in, in the big picture of that? You know, I do, I do, and it's it, the idea that of it being wireless and not, it's just like, I feel like it's such a representative of what we're going to be coming into in the 21st century. And just the, the decentralization of it too, and how it's so autonomous and I, I think it really represents where humanity is going to be going in the next few decades if we choose that path of freedom. And it's almost like the big side of light and the side of freedom and the side of real potential and compared to you know, what, we're, what we've been used to for the past 90 years with the Federal Reserve here. So it's, it's really exciting to see the developments in the past few months. Mm -hmm. Do you see... Um what about your site, your, um, your uh, online stores and blogging and all that? Are you accepting Bitcoin donations or accepting Bitcoin for purchases in any you know, of the I business? Haven't, I haven't set it up yet. I remember when you mentioned it to me, I think I went to that site, the Bitcoin Me site. Right. And then I started to sign and something was going on and I honestly just got distracted and it just kind of got put on the back burner. Well, and so I haven't been able to... Set that link up. Okay. Well, so for anybody who's interested in doing that, let me just tell you, if you go to bitcoinme.com, this is my site that I created. It's an informational site. It's a Bitcoin for newbies, and that's the topic of our show. Bitcoinme.com. If you click on the accept tab, I've just completely rewritten it. So if you click on the accept tab, uh, you will see a little tutorial about how to get set up as, a, you know, whatever it is, your product or service or donations or whatever it is that you're selling or accepting to get set up to accept Bitcoins, like literally in like 10, 15 seconds. It's so, so, so easy. I mean, you can get really fancy and sophisticated and integrate Bitcoin into a shopping cart stuff and all that. And there'll be links for that too. But to get set up for the basic idea of accepting donations by Bitcoin or accepting payments uh, as Bitcoin, it's like literally 20 seconds. You can set it up and start receiving payments and you'll get an email notifying you the minute somebody sends you a donation or a payment. So go to bitcoinme.com and click accept. And then there's also uh, buy and sell. If you go to on the same site, bitcoinme.com and click buy sell, you'll see really simple instructions about how to buy and sell bitcoins today. The easiest way today. It, option one is to, to find a local person who will exchange cash or, or your local currency for bitcoin. And there's a, a way that you can just put in your zip code or postal code or the name of your country. And it'll give you a list of all the people that are willing to come and meet at a coffee shop or whatever in exchange cash for Bitcoin and option two is the online services like tradehill.com where you can do it you know right online uh, by doing uh, many different ways but you know one of the ways one of the best ways for that is through a bank transfer but if you want to um, remain in cash then the best way is to do it through someone locally a local trader but anyway the bitcoinme.com has that tab as well buy and sell there's also uh, accept and there's also uh, what else? There's community. On there, there's the BitCon 2011, which is the Bitcoin, the world's first Bitcoin conference and world expo. 2011 at NYC, we're hosting right here at Only One TV Studios. So make sure you click on that and email to get in for your registration. If you want, if you have a product or service and you want to 
set up a, a table and uh, demonstrate or sell your products or services right here at the conference, uh, let us know that too and you can reserve that space. Or even if, you're, if you have suggestions for a speaker to be a, a keynote speaker at the conference, let us know that too. And then the last tab on there is uh, about a giveaway. We call the Bitcoin Fire Hydrant, which is coming. You can actually donate a Bitcoin or two to that cause and uh, we'll, talk, we'll be talking about that more in coming episodes but basically we're going to do this kind of a telethon drive that individuals can donate bitcoins, businesses can donate bitcoins in, in exchange for being mentioned in the thing and we're going to do a massive massive bitcoin giveaway. We expect the lines to go all the way down Fifth Avenue across to Broadway and down to Wall Street of people standing in line to uh, receive um, a free giveaway of bitcoins so be looking for more information about that but there's that's a tab on there as well the uh, bitcoinme.com giveaway so um, it, it any final thoughts because we only have like two minutes left um, final thoughts uh, I'll let um, Anthony go first what do you say then... Anthony any final thought on this topic before you hit the airport? <laughs> it's just so exciting. And for the investment opportunities and just the investment and the, the community and the, the decentralization of the money, I really, I'm so excited to see where Bitcoin has gone in the past six months. And uh, it really gives me hope for the future. Right. Well, um, I look forward to a day where, you know, Bitcoin um, is ubiquitous because right now it's still in its infancy and it just has an amazing potential that nothing else in the history of mankind has, this is like uh, the equivalent of the internet for money, you yeah. know? The internet has changed how, you know, we move uh, information, we exchange information, how research is done, how people communicate, how, you know, third world countries get connected with the rest of the world. Uh, so Bitcoin has so many socio-economic, uh, political and, there's so many aspects of it that's going to change about the way that we live and, and the way that we interact with the world. And I'm just really excited and I'm, I'm really happy, you know, just to, mm -hmm. to be conscious that, you know, I'm in the middle of it all. Yeah. And um, I can't wait. I especially can't wait to see how, you know, third world countries, you know, what they do with Bitcoin, because I think they have the most to benefit from it, where, you know, a country like Zimbabwe, where, you know, the monetary system could collapse or it's on the brink of collapse. So I'm just really excited for, for, the, for yes. the world in general. Exciting times to be living in. Well, we wanna, we're out of time now. We're going to thank one more time uh, our sponsors, yeah. BitcoinBonus.com and TradeHill.com and MeziGrill.com and USGoldCoins.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us and uh, stay tuned. Um, 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesdays, we have the Spanish language version of El Show de Bitcoin. So for any Spanish speakers, make sure you bookmark that link every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. And Bitcoin Show, the one you're watching, is every day, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.